Ah, the ambient, beautiful sounds of the city. Good morning, everyone, from Miami, Florida. Hope you guys are doing well. I will be uploading this video with some Nomad internet, link below in the video description, if I make it out of here in one piece. Kidding, I ain't scared, I ain't scared. Let me uh, stand back and show you this little gem of a spot if I don't get run over to. Look, I am parking next to the world's largest boom box. Yeah, art, it, it, it's art guys, yeah. Lots of beautiful Miami artwork around here. You know, originally this was a really neat, unique, you know, cassette boom box here. Of course, people are always spray painting over it and ruining other people's art. But you got the base buttons that are made out of uh, little buckets up there. Uh-huh. And, you know, sometimes places like these make RVers or any traveler feel a little uncomfortable. Um, this particular stretch has got a bunch of burnout marks. So you can tell people like to party down here. Um, but yeah, it's just love it, loveisms, loveism. Okay, art. Oh, and on the back side of the boom box, you have what? I, I don't know if these are people that I'm supposed to know. I don't know who it is, but you know, it was a beautiful piece, and then somebody decided that they had a better idea, so they, you know, they they graffitied over the artwork. And and you know, there's a lot of art that's interpretive around here, but still. Uh, I think over there, about six blocks, is uh, Wynwood, which is a, a lot like this, but there's a lot more controlled artwork. A lot of it's kind of secured, locked up, protected, and indoors. A couple years ago, I took you through that. Now, if you want to check out my, my Wynwood video, I'm not going to go do that again. I'm just going to walk around this block and show you where I'm at right now. I'm not a city boy, uh, but to each their own. You know, like having to lock everything up with, with gates and stuff and still it gets graffitied. You know, or the art. Sorry, sorry, it's your art. Sorry, I always offend people with their graffiti. Okay. But <laughs> I think it takes a certain kind of person, or maybe you're just raised that way where this is this is normal. But it does make a lot of people uncomfortable. I I don't like it. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't make me feel good. But again, this area was created this way on purpose to have beauty like this. And so some of it. I find really, really pretty. Other parts of it, you just scratch your head and go, why? Nobody cares about your name. Uh-oh, COVID-19 testing. It looks completely empty. That's weird. Okay. That's an interesting place for a COVID testing facility. You know, those COVID testing sites absolutely give me the creeps. Everybody walking around in hazmat suits, like you walk by and I get goosebumps and I feel like it's the end of the world, like 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 it's a movie or something. It is incredible. I, wow, okay. Uh, Rolling Stones and eh, what's up, Doc? Uh, did somebody have a little accident here? I don't think you're supposed to park right here. I don't think you're supposed to park like that. Oh, holy cow, it's a troll. It's a troll, guys. Ah, it's a troll made out of wood. Uh-huh. Because he's 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 trolling. He, he's keeping an eye on us with his tire eye there and, and winking at you. Uh-huh. I'm guessing he did this to this car though. This this minivan. Okay, is anybody in there sleeping? Well, there was power, the electrical cord right there, so at some time somebody decided this would be a good place to uh set up and live for the night. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. I want to read this sign right here. See more trolls at Pinecrest Gardens? What? Okay, I'll bite. I'll bite. Let's check it out. Trolls by Thomas Dumbo. There's a troll tail here. Okay, so there's a bunch of information here. I don't know if you guys want to zoom in on that and try to take a picture of that with your iPhone or other app, but you can find more about these trolls here in Miami. All right, Mr. Trolly Troll. And that's pretty much my Miami tour this year. Let's get the heck out of here as quick as we can. <laughs> All right, let's make sure the RV is still there. Yes! Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> uh, also, today here in Southern Florida in February, whoo boy, 87 degrees is the high today in February. It's gonna feel like 93. Woo wee! Might have to run that air conditioner. All right, I checked the smart car. Tater Tot is still attached. Good to go. Goodbye, Miami. And. <laughs> I don't like the big cities. I know most of my viewers don't either, but I can't say anything bad. It's just 
It's a different lifestyle. It's a, it's a different, it's literally a different way of life. Oh, there's Kobe Bryant right there. And if, I will say this, that I haven't been to this side of the town before, of because we're close to Wynwood. Like I said, eight, eight blocks away. But it's really cool how all the businesses do a little bit of something. And if somebody does, aw, Flintstones, Monopoly, Mickey. <laughs> you know, if, if somebody does graffiti, like this one off to our right, right here. That looks like graffiti to me, but you can just sell it as art. You know, so it's kind of cool. Okay, goodbye Miami. Let's go on an adventure today, guys. Thanks for joining me. I'm not looking for excuses to drive a big 32 foot class A towing a car through these big cities, but I wanted to check in on something that I've been to before here and see, the, see what's going on. All right, across the street, that used to be the world's largest guitar here at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Miami. I believe it's about 40 or 50 foot tall. Well, we'll keep walking here. It is no longer the world's tallest guitar. Uh, even during a pandemic last year, the Hard Rock Hotel here in Miami continued to uh, pour money into a new project. And guys, <laughs> that was not here a year ago. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the new Hard Rock Hotel Casino in built in the shape of a guitar. It is 40 stories high on both sides. You've got the frets and also I guess at night the middle of it There are five spotlights that go up into the sky that kind of continue the strings up to the sky So they have done an, an amazing job constructing this beautiful piece here. It's just uh, It's kind of risky because they they finished it during the pandemic last year and uh, it is open for business right now, although I've seen some interior pictures and I'll be honest with you, I wasn't, I wasn't too amazed by the inside of it. I think it's more of just an outside mark that says, you know, come check it out. But there you go, pretty cool. Now you have to stay for a minute. Um, I was just talking about this the other day. One of these days it's gonna happen, right? Well, I pulled in here and to my surprise, there are, they are all dead ends, so. Right now I'm kind of stuck because they, they don't go through every single little spot. If I didn't have the car, I'd be fine, but you cannot reverse with these blue ox systems. It binds the wheels up and you can, you can break an, an axle, a CV joint, something. So gonna have to work on that later. Let's go check out what I pulled in here for. So I have come to the Sheba Vishnu temple, y'all. It's like being teleported to India without going on the soaring ride at Walt Disney World. <laughs> I guess uh, usually it's open to the public, but for the last year they have uh, kept their, their doors closed here. Can you guys see all the ornate detail? Like, I gotta get a little closer to this so you can see the, the dragon curling through there. It's pretty amazing, guys. It's almost like they shipped this in from India and it just sat here. It is, uh, it looks authentic. You can see the, the doors here, they have little bells on them, but this is all hand carved wood in there. Look at that. That's pretty neat, man. It's pretty neat. I don't want to touch it, but I feel like I want to ring that bell. This is just the front of it right here. It goes all the way back. Look, here's your uh, shoe rack. You would eat, when it, when it was open, you would uh, have to keep your shoes in here in order to enter in there. I know once I start editing this tonight, I'll be able to go on Google and find some pictures of the interior. So uh, I'll show you a couple pictures of that. You obviously get to see them before I really even do. The outside is still breathtaking and it's pretty cool to see. Now let's go figure out how to get out of here. Just wanted to point out there was no way around getting stuck. Every single driveway is a dead end, uh, including where I went into. So, well, we'll get this done <laughs> live and learn well i guess there's nothing to really learn we knew this was going to happen eventually and it's the sacrifice of towing a car i can't just flip it into reverse because again these blue ox tow systems you absolutely cannot put the rv into reverse it'll turn the whole uh, front end of the car and you can break shafts in your car so i'm gonna unhook it 30 seconds 30 seconds let me put the e-brake on and we'll get this done all right here we go time me I feel like that scene from a Christmas story. <laughs> Done. How long? How long did it take? 
Everybody freaking out and losing their minds. Ah, oh, it's gonna be so difficult. Okay, so it's a slight pain in the butt to do, but it's quick and easy. My main point, it's not that big a deal. It's really not. And believe it or not, Jack's sitting here is actually really smart. What he's doing is he's sitting there because there's two air conditioning vents right there, and he likes the air conditioning. He sure does. He's a smart, good boy, but he doesn't bite my cords. He doesn't bite my cords. Okay, okay. All right, man. All right, and luckily this time I did not trap myself. Well, actually, this time I drove past this. Then I then I looked to see the parking and the way in and out so that I could make my U-turn and give myself a set. I mean, if you knew exactly where you're going every single day in a Class A towing, yeah, you could open up Google Maps and you could look and see how every driveway is positioned to make sure that you have a way out. But when you're just freestyling it, it's a little more difficult. So I don't know if we're going with a theme here today of ornate buildings or whatnot, but you guys know I love my movie theaters. I'm, I'm an AMC guy with my AMC list. I see two, three movies a week still because they're open here in Florida. Well, this is a Cinemark movie theater. However, it doesn't look like any movie theater you've probably ever seen in the country. So it's built to resemble a Fox Egyptian movie palace from the 1920s. I don't know when this particular building was built, but you don't see too many places putting in this much effort for a movie theater these days. And so look at, you've got some, obviously this is not like real or anything or authentic. Maybe it's copies of something, but all of the Egyptian artwork on all of the pillars here. I mean, it's pretty, pretty amazing, right? Again, they, they have reopened, but uh, you must buy all of your tickets online. They do not want to see you or talk to you or even get close to you in any of these theaters, really. But, but again, you know, stuff in Florida is reopening. And um, I also forgot to mention, but last night, yeah, last night I finally went and saw Nomadland in IMAX here in Florida. And if you haven't seen it, <laughs> Bob Wells is in the movie. Uh, it's not like based on a true story or anything, but they do mention the RTR in the movie and Quartzsite, Arizona, the big tent, bunch of stuff that a lot of nomads will recognize. However, the movie is all about van life. And so that may appease a bunch of my viewers. It's all about, you know, promoting Bob, Bob's uh, cheap RV living and all that. And there's, there's actual scenes where they're pooping in buckets, in vans, just living for free in vans. But it's got, there's a couple things like, I don't want to be mean, it's just they really, they're anti-RV in the movie and they're pro-van. And there's even a couple scenes where they just rag on anybody and make fun of anybody in an RV because van life is so superior. We're so much better than you because we don't spend as much money and we poop in a bucket. It's a weird movie. I still think you might you probably want to go see it or maybe wait till it gets released, but I did see it and I give it a, I give it a meh, meh. It's pretty, but <laughs> a lot of nomads are not gonna like nomad land, I'm just saying. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm spoiling you, okay? There's no pets allowed, so you gotta stay in the RV, but I'm taking care of the kitty kitty. This is the warmest, I'm gonna say it, this is the hottest part of the day. It's February, guys. 88 degrees in February. Whew, so, 
I fired up the uh, air conditioner, running the air conditioner off solar, essentially. Well, I'm running the air conditioner off my lithium batteries, which are charged by solar. It's pretty cool. Thought I would only be using this system in the summertime, but I'm gonna do one thing here real quick in my battery compartment. Gonna have to crank this fan on because that inverter gets so hot. Plug that guy in like there. There we go. That'll keep it from getting too hot because that pushes out a lot of heat with the air conditioner. Yeah, I'm gonna check this place out for a little bit and share it with y'all. I wish I could take Jax. This would be a great spot for him and his little buggy, but this one, like others like it, do say no pets allowed, and that's okay. He's comfortable in there. Well, you guys know how much I love my pink flamingos, so here we are at Flamingo Gardens. With a gator and a kitty cat up there. This could be interesting. I'm not gonna share the whole place with you, but I'll share some of my favorites with you. Well, here's the entrance. It says it's $12 admission to go check out the park. So I'm gonna be sharing that with you. And again, the way you can help me with these tickets is simply just to watch my videos. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and share them. And that's how I'm able to uh, buy all these admission tickets on the road and share them with you on YouTube. So here we go. Thanks guys. All right, well, I got my little pamphlet and map and, oh, well, hi, hi there little kitty. Was I, was I getting in your way there? Are you happy, boy? Are you just chilling? Okay, we got little garden kitties, guys. Okay. There's another fluffy butt. Hi, fluffy Hi. butt. How come you guys get to be in here and Jack's cat come in here? That's not fair. It says no pets. It says no pets. Ooh, he's feisty. He's a feisty boy. Okay, I'll leave you alone. Sorry. You do have to wear a mask in the park at all times, even outdoor. It's just a company rule. And they have a tram that you can get on for a little ride. But you guys know my experience on those trams. They're they're talking and you can't hear them and I can't see on the tram and it's an, almost impossible to share with you. So we're gonna go on foot and walk around and I'll show you what I like. Wow, look at all the different colored birds in here. We're gonna see a lot of birds. Where's all my uh, parrot peeps? All the different colors, that's awesome. Hi guys. By the way, we're not in Miami anymore. We're in Davie and we have an orange and uh, a grapefruit. We'll go with grapefruit. <laughs> You don't have to look too hard to find wildlife, guys. We got some peacocks. I think the males are the darker ones and the females are the really beautiful colored ones. Look yeah. at all the blues and greens on him. He's not gonna fluff up his feathers for us though. He's like, man, bring me some food. Oh, look, this guy's got, uh, I don't wanna get too close to him. He's got green on his neck. Wow, you guys just have the life, don't you? I'm sorry, was I talking too loud? I didn't mean to stress you out. I, I didn't bring any peacock kibbles. Sorry, I didn't bring any. But nice feathers, can I have one for Jax? He would he would love one of those if I, okay, sorry. sorry. There's a, a baby showing off. He doesn't have all the colors of the adults, but he's showing off and here's an adult showing off. I don't know if that's like, I don't know what they're trying to say when they do that, if they like they're scared or something. I'm, I'm not sure what that means exactly, but it's pretty. Oh my gosh, pink flamingos and white, e I think those are egrets, but lots and lots of pink flamingos in here, guys. I pretty much say this anytime I'm in an area that has animals. I, I am an animal lover, y'all. I'm not a big fan of zoos. This is not a zoo, so there's no need to think that there's animal mistreatment or anything going on here. Uh, these are some happy animals uh, in a good environment doing the right thing for these animals. Blah, 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 doesn't matter. You already decided. <laughs> All right, I'm trying the uh, Flamingo Dog Special. Wait, they didn't, they didn't like that. They didn't like it. If you stand up here close, it looks like a bunch of little baby trees that have like tangled up together, but it's actually one big tree. Well, that's kind of morphed off into little branches, but yeah. Now we're here in the fern garden and um, you know, I'm, I'm used to the Western sword fern back home in Washington. I don't know what the name of all these ferns are, but look how big that is like that. That's pretty cool. The uh, tram just went by. She was uh, saying something about this tree here. I couldn't catch what she was saying. I guess she was identifying it, but I couldn't hear. We're just making this up as we go. So this is called the Boom Shakalaka tree. And we're gonna go check out the Boom Shakalaka tree. Oh, I wish I could explain to you the smell in here. It's just, well, it's like that that scene from Soren in Disney World where they spray the, the, the dirt smell through you. That's what it smells like in here. It's very rooty. It smells like a different country. It's pretty cool. Just a, a, a maze of tangled boom shakalaka trees. 
It's a really pretty place here. I'm going to take some pictures so I can share those on Instagram later. And then I'm going to head out and check in on Jax. We still got to find a place to boondock for the night here in Southern Florida, y'all. Yeah. Cool, cool spot to hang out for the day. I wanted to also mention that I was reminded both on the way in and on the way out, asked to uh, post my experience to social media here and check in, which I think is really cool because you know, it is really hit and miss. I would say it's about 50% of the time. You know, some businesses absolutely love it when you share it with social media, like with 220,000 people that might want to visit here because I showed a little bit of it. And then you have other places that are like, put that away, you can't possibly take a picture of this. <laughs> like Universal. <laughs> yeah. Let me get in the RV and I'll show you my magnet. There's the uh, magnet I got, says Flamingo Gardens on it. It's a cool little sandal with sand that moves around in there. I have one that's about half this size back at base camp from Sun Beach, but no, this is cool. That works. Well, I'm to my uh, parking spot for the evening. My overnight parking accommodations cleared it through a cracker barrel of Florida City here. So, um, yeah, and I, you know, I fit without unhooking the car, but I mean, if I were any longer, you might have to unhook your car if it stuck out too much and put it in a normal spot over here for one night. No biggie, you know, I, I don't mind unhooking it. And again, the angle's really high right now on the, the Blue Ox because I got the back end jacked up to make the RV level. But they do offer quite a few RV parking slips here. Kind of one of the great things about Cracker Barrel. So they got one, two, three, four, five, six of them that say RV bus. And then you got people that just can't read. I mean, it even says RV bus right on the I mean, right where they parked and some people just either can't read or don't care, you know? But I wanted to say also, these are not the type of spots, just like rest areas, you don't put your slides out. So, I mean, I, you know, this slide does technically work to come out and give me more kitchen room, but no, you, you can't do it in places like this. You gotta stay between the lines in case, uh, you know, other RVs come. I mean, unless you're a car, you can just do whatever you want, I guess. In case you're wondering about that, that that's gonna happen at every single Cracker Barrel in the entire country. They don't enforce it. They don't, then they would never like, say, oh, you can't park in one of our RV spots if you're a car. No, you can park wherever you want. It's just, you would think it's common sense, you know? You guys can park in any spot you want. You should leave the long RV spaces for us, but they don't, and there's no punishment, and Cracker Barrel doesn't care, just so you know. But with all the Walmarts not allowing RVs, it's nice that most of these, even in Florida, Cracker Barrel still allow overnight parking. So this is my setup at uh, 3 p.m. here in Southern Florida. I have turned the air conditioner back off. I want to let the last bit of sun here charge up my batteries. I'm doing the fan situation, blowing it through here uh, with the slide in. I still have that. I'm doing my TV search for satellite right now. Uh, the RV is still fully functional with the main, uh, the driver's slide in, except for the sink area. I can, I can cook here, but I can't access the drawers down there. Uh, popcorn buckets and extra stuff. I, basically, I put stuff down there that I don't need on a regular basis. Like I only need once a week my Brita filter and stuff for water in the fridge. Otherwise, you got to kind of reach over the sink to wash dishes and stuff. But, you know, it's going to work. So I'm going to edit here for a little bit and I'll get back to you guys in a little bit. All right. Well, it is now nighttime. This lot has completely filled up an RV in every spot except two cars on the other side of one of the Class C's. Um, but the restaurant closes in about an hour here. We've got a couple vans, actually one, two, three. There's four camper vans, right? You probably can't see them. It's dark here. Anyway, uh, Cracker Barrel works. There's a train nearby. There's been a lot of police activity and sirens, but um, I, even though I can't get a reservation farther south, I think I'm still gonna take you south with me in our, ne in our next video. I know, that's scary, so. Anyways, I uh, met one of my patrons tonight, Penny. We hung out and had dinner and margaritas and uh, good conversation. So I am going to uh, pack it all in and Jackson and I will see you soon. Thanks guys, have a good night, bye-bye.